Hi, I'm Mario Shiatsuno and welcome to my video blog on Big Data Technologies and Advanced Analytics. In this video I will show you how you can build a real-time anomaly detection application with the use of the latest Apache Spark platform and its streaming and machine learning components. Let's first explain what anomaly detection is. In short, anomaly detection, otherwise called outlier detection, is a process by means of which computer program autonomously identifies items or observations which do not conform to an expected pattern. Typically, the items recognized as outliers will translate to some kind of a problem, novelty, noise or exception. Given that anomaly detection identifies unknown unknowns, that is, things we haven't observed before, it can be applied to detect such events as bank fraud, security threat, device failure or any other old behavior that we haven't observed in the past. Why having a real-time anomaly detection solution is important? Nowadays, software systems process huge volumes of events in real time. Being able to tap into such continuous stream of data and detect any suspicious or novel activity in real time provides us with critical information that we can take advantage of immediately it arrives. Unfortunately, building real-time outlier detection system is not a trivial task as the overall solution needs to be scalable, reliable and fault-tolerant. So how, how can we build it? Similarly to my previous video blog on credit scoring, we could build outlier detection system around a commonly available math and statistical environments such as R, MATLAB or any other available library. However, this approach would require us to create a lot of custom code to make this solution production ready. For example, we would have to build our own infrastructure to ingest the real-time stream, send it to anomaly detection algorithm and then push the results back to other systems. This could be doable task on a small scale, but once processing demands exceed the capacity of a single machine, it will require substantial investment in time to engineer a reliable solution. For this reason, in this video I will focus on big data processing platform Apache Spark that was designed specifically to address all those issues. The key difference it offers is its distributed nature of computation thanks to which data processing can be performed in parallel on a cluster computational nodes. Secondly, it can ingest continuous streams of data and has built-in fault tolerance and finally provides its own machine learning library, MLib, that removes the need of integration with external components. This coupling is very important as many iterative machine learning algorithms can benefit from Spark's parallel processing and thus analyze more data at a much quicker pace. For reference, here is a sketch of the system architecture that we will build. Our solution consists of three elements. Our outlier detection system in the form of a real-time stream processing engine a system that reliably streams input data to our outlier detection system and the final destination system where the detected anomalies are sent. It is important to note here that requests that are generated and streamed to our system arrive in real time and at a high velocity and the goal of our system is to process them as fast as possible. There are three development stages involved in the process of building the system. The first thing we need to do is to teach our system to autonomously detect outliers. The next stage is to build a system that will stream input data into our outlier detection system. And the last stage is to build the core system that will run the outlier detection process on the streamed input data. Let us now look into technical details of each stage, starting from the first one and then following in order. To build outlier detection mechanism, we will rely on k-means clustering algorithm provided by Apache Spark's MNIC library. k-means is an algorithm that, given a set of data samples, assigns them into groups, clusters, that are consistent in terms of predefined similarity, for example, distance between each other. 
This technique is widely used in data mining as it allows to gain insight into the distribution of data and explore underlying, often invisible structure. For example, clustering is commonly used to help marketers discover distinct groups in their customer base that they may characterize based on the purchasing patterns. It has also been successfully applied to detect patterns in text, image, and in outlier detection applications such as detection of credit card fraud. For the latter case, assuming detected clusters represent our knowledge about processed data samples and its similarity to each other, an anomaly could be represented by a data observation that is outside any cluster. This strategy identifies an outlier point that never existed in our past observations and thus may indicate some sort of novelty error or exception we should investigate. To translate this theory into a practical example, consider a following scenario. We have an example data set containing array of observations, each observation being an X and Y point. All data points are synthetically generated such that based on distance between each other, they can be grouped into four distinct clusters. The third column in the data set indicates the label name of the cluster that data points should be assigned to that would be helpful when assessing the algorithm clustering output. When we plot the whole data set containing over 1.5k points, we can see that there are indeed four clusters, two distinct ones and two slightly overlapping. What we will do now is run the clustering algorithm that will identify four clusters and, more importantly, compute their sensor coordinates, marked as yellow. The code will then calculate and identify the longest distance between cluster centroid and its most distant element. We will use that value as an our outlier distance threshold meaning that any point that is located at a higher distance than the threshold value will be recognized as an outlier. Finally, we will inject two new points, uh, seen as top left and bottom right points on the image, and ask our algorithm to identify if these are outliers or not. The code handling functionality is written in Scala uses Apache Spark's MLib and works as follows. First, we load the history data with all data points. These points can be assumed to represent the normal system behavior. We then initialize k-means clustering algorithm with predefined k equal to 4, as we know the number of clusters that the algorithm should organize the data across. I will explain how to detect optimal value for k if it is unknown a little bit, bit later in this blog. Once the clusters and their centroids are computed, we calculate the longest distance between the centroid and its outermost point. With this value at hand, we have our outlier detection distance threshold and can apply it on the two test data points. Of course, the, the threshold value could be adjusted by us and have any arbitrary value that we think is um, good for filtering out um, anomalies that we want to detect. Before we run the code, it is important to discuss the choice of k parameter defining the number of clusters the algorithm should group our input data into. In here, we use test data for which we knew the optimal k value beforehand. We the clustering. Therefore, setting it to value 4, we were confident to achieve the optimal clustering. However, in real-life scenarios, we do not know that value and thus need to calculate it. Since wrong k value may affect the accuracy of the whole design, the identification of an optimal number of clusters becomes one of the most important tasks during outlier detection design. In this example, we've applied a simple elbow method that returns clustering algorithm for various k-values and computes average distance to centroid for each setting. 
When plotted against k value, we can see that the optimal value for k equals 4, as increasing it further, has a little effect on the improvement measured as average distance of cluster points to its center. Okay, let's run the algorithm and see what happens. First thing we get from the output is some stats on the test data where we can see how many data samples have been labeled as belonging to specific clusters. For example, we have five to eight points labeled with cluster zero and four to four points labeled with the cluster number three. Next, the clustering takes place as a result of which we get cluster centroids coordinates for each cluster. We can also assess how many data points have been assigned to each cluster as a result of clustering. In here we can see that clusters with 272 and 348 members have been correctly recognized but the algorithm had a slight problem with 528 and 424 members and some of them were assigned to the wrong cluster. This is because of the close vicinity of the points as we can see on this image. The next stage of calculation <coughs> shows our outlier detection threshold value to be around 9.2 and this value is used to identify outliers based on the example three data points. Two of them are currently identified as outliers because they are much further from any cluster centroid than the defined threshold. Finally, we can see runs of clustering for different k parametrizations from one to five and their clustering improvement measured as a mean distance to centroid. The elbow point, that is the k value after which we don't see uh, any further significant improvement in clustering is located at four. Therefore, we, are, we know that number four is the optimal for this uh, clustering scenario. Now that we have all the bits required to identify clusters and outliers, let us use it to build our real-time streaming outlier detection solution. The next stage in our project involves building engine for streaming new data into our outlier prediction platform. This is achieved with the use Apache Flume library and Flume client that imitates the client from which the input data is sent or generated. Apache Flume gives us the flexibility of extending the scenario even further by adding more sources of data and defining full tolerant load balanced, load balanced streaming process to our outlier detection platform. The platform itself accepts batches of inflowing data, sends them to our outlier detection code and returns the output to the output stream represented by a console. Console output could be easily substituted by a more elaborate output uh, stream sending all detected anomalies to other external systems. This step was omitted for brevity. The code of the core application looks as follows. First, we define a streaming context that will accept all streaming data in the form of one second batches. Uh, we then load the cluster centroids computed during the clustering process and ho hook up the incoming stream with Flume event processing receiver. Um, when new data points arrive, the code iterates over them, extracts features needed by clustering algorithm and calculates their distance to, from nearest to them cluster centroid. If distance is further, then our threshold value, the code signals outlier detection. To demonstrate the whole process, let's run the simulation. Please note that Flume agent responsible for streaming data is already started. Let's now start the main outlier detection app and before it starts, let's have a look at the Flume client application that we will stream the input data requests. In here, new requests events are sent to Flume agent with no delay that then reliably sends them to our outlier detection application. 
And here we are continually sending a randomly selected data points from the small subset that contains three predefined outliers that we are about to test and see if our system detects them. Now that the Apache Spark has started, we can initialize input data stream. As new data flows into our detection system, we can see that it processes them and correctly identifies anomalies within the stream of input data. As mentioned earlier, detected anomalies could be streamed further down the line to external system, but this is omitted for brevity. The last thing we will look at is the performance of our solution. On the Apache Spark management panel, we can see that it is able to process over 1000 requests per second, which is not bad considering we run it on a medium spec laptop and not the cluster. At this point, we have reached the end of this blog. I hope you enjoyed it and understood the advantage that Apache Spark provides in building advanced analytical applications. Speak to you soon. Bye bye.